Hello and welcome to this updated video guide for completing the final steps of faith in Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. My name is Steers Steers and in this video you'll learn everything you need to know to put somebody's eye out. There are four phases in this somewhat challenging encounter so let's take a look. As the main tank, pull Nidhogg and face him away from the group. As the off tank, just pretend you're a DPS, though you'll have an ad to pick up later. This is phase 1. There are a lot of different attacks to avoid here, so for starters, watch out for Horrid Roar. This will be three dark blue AoE zones targeting random players, including tanks. You can actually tell where these will go just beforehand by the slash marks that will appear, but this is quite easy to avoid. The boss can also use Hot Wing to AoE the whole room on either side of him, so stand in a line with him to avoid it. Lastly, Nidhogg may jump up and cauterize a large section of the room. This is usually done in combination with a Horrid Roar, but if you can see where Nidhogg flies to, it'll give you a head start on knowing where the danger will be. At 75%, Nidhogg will jump away and Phase 2 will begin. Here, you'll have to deal with three adds. Do note that the Shadow Dragon that spawns in the middle cannot be tanked. That said, both tanks should each grab one of the others and face them away from the group as they could do spicy breath attacks. As a tip, I would definitely mark these for a kill order. It doesn't matter which order you kill them in, but it's best to kill them quickly and marks will focus your team. The Shadow Dragon will go around trying to cleave attack random players. There is no graphic for this on the ground, but you can see him telegraph attacks by raising an arm back. Everyone should be able to avoid these, but in the chaos, healers should expect some random hits. With the adds dead, Nidhogg will return and knock you all backwards. He'll then change into a humanoid form and blast a platform trying to wipe you. As long as you killed the adds, you'll be fine. After this, Phase 3 will begin. As in Phase 1, tanks should continue to face the boss away due to cleaves. Here, Nidhogg will quite commonly cast Alamorn at the main tank, which actually deals substantial damage. Unfortunately, healers will just need to deal with this as it can't be interrupted. In addition, the boss will randomly cast the line AoE Gierskogel at random players, so keep on your toes. During this phase, Nidhogg can also target 5 players with high jump. If you get targeted by this sizeable dark pink AoE, run to the sides of the room. Once the attack lands, you'll leave a patch of AoE on the ground for a while, so you don't want these eating space. However, pay attention, because the first time this is cast, Nidhogg will leave the fight, high jumps will come down, and then immediately after, there will be a line AoE from each high jump target towards the centre of the room. To add pressure, Nidhogg will also mark a seemingly random player for super jump, as shown by the usual, the closer you are to this, the more it's going to hurt AoE indicator. The super jump indicator appears just before the line AoEs, but actually lands after them. However, appearing in this order does create quite a bit of chaos, so do your best to find somewhere safe. Generally, the line AoEs are the priority to avoid, because you can easily eat multiple, which can be lethal. After this initial sequence, further high jumps will not be followed by line AoEs or super jumps, so just make sure you put the AoE zones around the edges. At 25%, Nidhogg will start Phase 4 and Blood Rage the whole party for a decent hit. In this phase, Nidhogg will turn red and will use many of the same abilities as in Phase 1. However, now when Nidhogg does Hot Wing, he will immediately follow it up with Hot Tail. This is basically the reverse, so the AoE will hit in a line with the boss and the safe areas are to the sides. In addition, he can drop three huge balls of fire that will eventually explode in a plus shaped line AoE. These don't hit that hard, but stand diagonally to them to avoid. Just remember not to stand too close, as the AoE is wider than the ball of fire. Now then, the last mechanic here is the most lethal, and has the highest chance of causing a wipe, so listen up. During this phase, random players can get targeted with Ak Morn. This is shown by the massive golden arrows pointing to said player. As many players as possible, even the main tank, should stack up on this player. Akmorn will blast multiple hits of lightning, dealing a massive amount of damage shared by everyone nearby. You must wait until the last blast of lightning before moving away, and each time this is cast there will be more blasts than before. Even if you die, Nidhogg will still execute every remaining blast, but as the move targets people randomly, it will most likely one-shot people and result in a wipe. 
due to the size of the boss, it's actually quite easy to miss when this attack is being targeted if, for example, it's targeting someone on the opposite side of Nidhogg. So, it's a good idea for everyone but the main tank to stay in the same rough area for Phase 4. Punch a level 2 or 3 limit break when you can, and here go down. As a final note, when healing this fight, expect deaths. The mechanics hit quite hard here and Nidhogg also AoEs the group from time to time. This isn't to say that it's a hard fight to heal, but most likely some players will fail mechanics and eat the ground, so be ready with swift cast revives and keep lucid dreaming on cooldown so you don't run out of MP. Other classes with heals like red mages or paladins can also help out now and then if someone looks to be in trouble. And that's the final steps of faith. If you enjoyed the guide, then let me know. And if there are any other guides or perspectives you'd like to see, then check out my channel or feel free to ask me to create one. Thank you for watching and good luck.